let's finally move on to complex shapes. And we are in a race against time here to try to beat the bell for this video. So bear with me. Hopefully I don't go too fast for you. First off, a complex shape is just multiple shapes, or multiple simple shapes, I should say, combined. Okay, and the formula for your X and Y is pretty simple, and it's actually kind of a repeat. But we keep going back to the average mass, and this is what I mean when I say the average mass. In the X direction, your X for your centroid is the sum of all X individuals times your area individuals divided by the sum of all area individuals. Now, your y direction is the exact same formula, but with y individuals instead of x individuals. So we'll say, I'm sorry, I meant to write the sum of all, that shouldn't be there, uh, y individuals multiplied by area individuals divided by the sum of all area individuals. So individual x is multiplied by individual areas divided by the sum of all individual areas. And so Again, hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand what I mean when I say average. But let's skip a few lines over here to the side, and let's draw a rectangle that's five squares tall and six squares wide. Two, three, four, five, six. But then when we go up, I'm going to add a second shape. I'm going to go up one and go to the right two and draw a little square off to the side here. And then I'm going to go up the next two and connect the top. So this is about as simple of a complex shape as I can get. When I say it's combining two complex shapes, what I mean is literally I have a rectangle combined with a square. Now, let's give ourselves a reference point. And again, for consistency's sake, I'm going to put it at the bottom left. When I say X individuals, what I mean is the individual X's uh, distance from the reference point. So look at the first shape, the first individual shape. How far away would its centroid be from my reference point? Three. So our x1 equals three. What would your y1 for your first shape be? Or your y distance from your uh, reference point? Very good. 2.5. I'm glad y'all could get that even though I was stumbling through my words there. And what would be the area of this shape? Area of shape one. 30. Very good. Okay. Now, what would our X2 be? It is the distance from the consistent reference point, and it's very important you recognize that. Yes, it is seven squares from my reference point. Its X would be seven, and you have to get that here. Your Y2 would be how far away from your reference point in the Y direction. Two squares. Very good. And the area of your second shape would be four. Again, we are measuring it from the reference point. So, yes, this is 7 from here to here. Cool. I should draw that a little bit better. So, now what I do, if I want to find my X total, is I'll just plug it in. I'll say my uh, I'm going to add up all my individual X's multiplied by the area. So, my first individual X was 30 multiplied by the area. I'm sorry, it was 3. The individual area was 30. So, 3 times 30 plus... My other individual x, which was 7, times its individual area, which was 4. And divide that by the sum of all areas. The first area was 30. The second one was 4. I'll spare you the math. 3 times 30 is 90. 7 times 4 is 28. 3, 30 plus 4 is 34. If you take the time to calculate this in your handy-dandy calculator, you would get an x total of 3. Point five. We do the exact same thing for our y total. In this case, your y1 is 2.5 multiplied by the individual area for shape 1, which is still 30. It hasn't stopped being 30. This time, your y2 is 2 multiplied by its individual area, which is 4. Very good. And we'll divide that by the area plus the other area, which is just 30 plus 4. We get 2.5 times 30 is 75 
plus 2 times 4 is 8, and 30 plus 4 is still 34. That doesn't stop being true. And again, I'll spray you the math. You type this into your handy, handy calculator, you'll get a Y distance of 2.4 for your Y total. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all can't see that, can y'all? So I'll move it around. I'll just rewrite it down here at the bottom. Y total equals 2.4. X total equals 3.5. Let's think about this for a second. What we're saying is, if we go to the right from a reference point 3.5, and we go up from a reference point 2.4, that would be our total centroid for this shape. And again, really think about it. Does it make sense that the shape on the bottom right added to this would pull our centroid down and to the right from the bigger shape? But does it make sense that the smaller area would affect the centroid a little bit less than the bigger one? This is what we mean when we say average shape.